of The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. This is Ed McMahon, along with Doc Severinsen and the NBC Orchestra, inviting you to join Johnny with some highlights from the past, featuring Ed Ames, Dom DeLuise, James Drury and Doug McClure, Sally Field, George Goldberg, Bob Hope and Dean Martin, Steve Lawrence, Steve Martin, Dolly Parton, Anthony Quinn, Burt Reynolds, Don Rickles, James Stewart, and Jack Webb. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Johnny! You can, um, ladies and gentlemen, you can applaud all you want. I'm not going to do another 17 years. <laughs> thank you. That's very nice of you. And first, I want to thank President Carter for doing the warm-up tonight. <laughs> Normally, we would have um, we would have followed tonight Little House on the Prairie, but now we're following the Big House on Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> Now, let me explain how this worked out. NBC, you see, put me in prime time to celebrate the 17th anniversary of The Tonight Show. And they put President Carter on to celebrate the 17th anniversary of the Cuban Missile Crisis. <laughs> the president just spoke, and he is, he's getting very tough with the Russians. But the Kremlin is not too intimidated. After all, this is a man who barely survived a confrontation with a rabbit. <laughs> If you tune in later tonight in our regular time spot at 11.30, we will not be on, of course. This is the Tonight Show for tonight. Tonight, the Pope will be on in our regular time spot. No, no, this, this is Monday. There'll be a guest Pope. <laughs> By the way, if, uh, I might mention tonight, if you, during the Pope special, if you try to change channels, NBC will not be responsible if you turn into a pillar of salt. <laughs> you know what's going to happen tonight? Somebody's going to tune in late. Not then see the Pope and say, all right, Carson's gone too far with this sketch. <laughs> you know, if you think about it, the Pope and the President, President Carter, do have something in common. Uh, both of their successors will be Catholic. <laughs> uh, no, I, don't, no, I don't mean to frighten the President, but I... I think Teddy Kennedy has made up his mind that he's going to run. White, no, I don't know. White smoke was seen coming out of his chimney in Hyannis Port. <laughs> but the Pope, as you know, is back east. He landed in Boston today, and tomorrow night, Pope John Paul II will be saying mass at Yankee Stadium in New York. That should be thrilling. Yeah. And Wednesday night, he will be giving last rites at Dodger Stadium. Ed, we're finally in prime time. Yeah. Isn't this exciting? It's great. Just my luck. Prime time, and tonight we probably don't have an audience. All the Jewish people are observing the holiday, and all the Catholics are out in the rain watching the Pope. We don't have anything <laughs> left. <laughs> then they put us on the Day of Atonement. Are they trying to tell us something? <laughs> Personally, I don't even know what I'm doing in prime time. I don't even jiggle. Uh, well, I do. It's just not visible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we did... 
You make up your own joke. All right, uh... Just think, you know, the first show we did was from New York City, October 1st, 1962. That was a long time ago. How long was it? Yeah, I knew, I knew. That was so long ago that the Ayatollah Khomeini was a fun guy, loved to dance. <laughs> You know, that was so long ago, there were no Mary Tyler Moore reruns. <laughs> Howard Cosell was wearing a training toupee. <laughs> and when Hamilton Jordan and Jody Powell first started to watch this show, they were like Homer and Jethro. Lately, they've been acting like Cheech and Chong. <laughs> uh, do you remember the first show? Yep. First show from New York. I remember I stepped off the train. I was welcomed to New York City by, by an office boy from NBC. And he, I remember, he looked up at that huge train and he said, you know, this would make a good series. Whatever, whatever happened to little Freddie Silverman, you know, he was... Anyway, we're glad you're here tonight. We've got a wonderful show for you. First of all, I want to thank Four Star. I want to take the opportunity to thank you, the viewing audience, for making all of this possible. We, we really couldn't have done 17 years without you because you recognize the Tonight Show for, for what it is. The intelligent alternative to foreplay. <laughs> We have. Later on, we're going to talk about the new television season and show you some of the programs that did not make it oh. on the fall season, some of the new pilots that didn't get on. And then, as you saw in our opening billboard, we have a lot of famous sketches that we have done over the past 17 years. Thank you for coming, and we're going to be right back after this. <laughs> Well, sir, happy 17th. Happy 17th. Well, I suppose we should get right to what's happening this season we should, before we get to a retrospective. Of there some are always of a lot moments. of pilots made. Some do not make it. Well, all the shows that are on. Here are some listings from Television Guide as described in the new season. Buck Rogers, you know about that? The right. 25th century. Finds Buck up to his old tricks with stun guns, lasers, and lovable robots. New show called Heart to Heart. Right. Stars Robert Wagner and Stephanie Powers as a wealthy San Francisco couple who, at the slightest whiff of adventure, drop everything and run off to play detective. Out of the Blue. You familiar with that? Out of the Blue. It's about an angel who tells one-liners, plays a guitar instead of a harp, and loves the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> Big Seamus, Little Seamus. That's set in Atlantic City Gambling Casino. It's about the hotel's house detective and his 13-year-old son who solved crimes. Trapper John, M.D., about a surgeon in a big city hospital who must contend with a cocky young doctor who parks his motorhome in the hospital lot. Ooh. These are real shows, folks. <laughs> Working stiffs about a pair of blundering nincompoops who work as janitors in an office building where they harass the manager, put the make on pretty tenants, and turn the building into a shambles. Man called Sloan. Robert Conrad is a stylish bachelor who's a top secret agent. Surely... Star Shirley Jones. Good thinking. <laughs> As a widow with four kids, a new kind of family. Are you familiar with that? Yes. About a widow and her three children who move in with a divorcee and her daughter and share the house expenses and problems. <laughs> the Lazarus Syndrome about a cardiologist and newspaper reporter who team up to run a hospital. Eyeshide about the New York City Police Department's chief of detectives. Now, those are just some... Those are the real ones. Those are the real ones. And as you know, they probably... Make how many pilots in a season? Several hundred, I would say. Hundred, maybe a, a thousand. Mm. Those are the ones that got on the air. We have some publicity pictures from pilots that did not get on the networks this fall, and it's really kind of a shame because some of them are, are really wonderful. Really winners? Yeah. yeah. For example, here's one here, a show called Tokyo Rosenthal. <laughs> this is about uh, it's a World War II drama about a Japanese radio announcer who acted as her own antenna. <laughs> I don't know why that didn't get on. This is a public affairs show called 60 Seconds. Here we see an in-depth interview with the president of the Chrysler Corporation. <laughs> Sitting there on the right. Well, you know, television has done several biographies of famous people, famous women, notably uh, Babe Dietrichson's Zaharias and Amelia Earhart. This one was called 
Dolly Parton, The Early Years. <laughs> From the studio that brought you The Incredible Hulk, now comes The Unbelievable Rabbi. <laughs> this is about a rabbi who forces himself between newlyweds and refuses, them, refuses to let them consummate their marriage until they say something nice about his hat. Here's a warm family series about a bachelor presidential aide and his relationship with the White House secretarial pool. <laughs> Hamilton Jordan stars in 88 is not enough. <laughs> These folks didn't make it. Here's a science fiction series about a mad woman scientist who clones hundreds of little Gary Coleman's. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then buses them to the Osmond Family School. <laughs> This one I kind of like. Little House on the Construction Site. <laughs> Story of two wacky carpenters who like to dance the soft shoe in front of a porta potty. <laughs> I was turned down. This PBS special didn't make it. The six part biography of Madame Ooh, the discoverer of the first suppository. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Here's a show called Who's Next, a game show set in Iran. In the tradition of last season's Mrs. Colombo, Mrs. Kojak. <laughs> Didn't get on. Another detective show called Barnaby Bones. <laughs> About a detective that's so old that he makes a citizen's arrest of himself. Kind of tragic. Ah. Uh, war, the war picture, a movie or series called A Squatted to Conquer. <laughs> It's a, little known, it's a little known World War II a story about a company of Nazis who invade Poland while doing very bad impressions of Groucho Marx. <laughs> From the producers of The Incredible Hulk came this pilot about a man who loses his temper and turns into a giant banana <laughs> called The Incredible Fruit. <laughs> Here's a show about students at a mortician school that didn't get on called One Day at a Tomb. <laughs> In the first episode, they schedule a mass burial, but forgot to order the coffins. You see them carrying the people there with no coffins. <laughs> now, here's a segment that 60 Minutes will not be airing, about a terrorist group called the YLO, the Yenta Liberation Organization. <laughs> and here, two women look at a machine gun they use to force their sons to eat chicken soup. <laughs> Didn't get on. Didn't get on. Television does do drama very well. Yes. They do drama yes. except You can well. say that. They've done outstanding works adapted from uh, literature such as uh, I, Claudius, mm -hmm. the Tale of Two Cities. This was a lesser-known masterpiece called A Hatful of Ralph. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we got to get going now. We always say it's unfortunate we do not have things as early as we'd like, but the tapes were destroyed or erased or whatever. But um, one night, the fun thing about doing this show is you never know on any given night what will happen. happen. Now, one night we had uh, Dom DeLuise, Burt Reynolds on the same show, and it was a rather dignified show. It was like Sir Ralph Richardson and mm -hmm. Laurence Olivier would have been booked. Watch what happened. Here's Dom and Burt Reynolds. Famous you see these eggs? eggs? And, and, and when I say three, <sighs> you're gonna hit the tray. The eggs are gonna go in the glass. Yes. Okay. Now, ready? Oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? No. What? what are all you right. All right. I don't have to do it that way. All right. Just a moment. Just a moment. All right. Here. You watch it. You just watch it. Okay. Just a moment. Okay, just a moment. Are you crazy?
if it gets warm in here, I'm an omelet. <laughs> But, oh, good heavens. You guys are bananas. I Wait, let me get Burt Reynolds out quick. Over there. I did a quality sketch. I mean, yeah. did you see my eggs went right in? They did. And then you start putting it right in your... I didn't do it. In the groin. Oh. Here. How am I going to explain this to my wife? Oh. Where you been, hon? I mean... Yeah. What are you doing with the cholesterol in your shorts? That way, wife won't be suspicious when you get home. I, in my, I never, I never. I don't know what front. There's something about eggs. Something about eggs. Uh, and you get the devil in you came out. You just, you just really, uh, I'm, you, I'm sorry, you went want, business there. What well, ape? Yes. I have to reach for my keys. <laughs> and my keys are. <laughs> well, I, I hope you're driving have, a chicken when you go home. Are, I have. These are my car keys. Over here is a surprise. You know what I mean? I'm not worried about my keys. <laughs> oh, that's a silly feeling. Yeah. Well, I hope the shell doesn't travel. <laughs> well, okay, that was a lot of fun. Sure. Would you welcome Burt Reynolds? Hey, hey! Here we go again. Two grown men. <laughs> and now later on, two grown men. For the people who don't get to watch the Tonight Show, we wanted to show you that we do some esoteric, high-class comedy from yes. time to time. You know, rather, rather subtle. Now, later on, a few weeks, I, a couple of months later it was, I think, Sally Fields came on the show, who is Burt Reynolds' girlfriend. And it's easy to see why they get along well. I didn't know what she was going to do that night. In fact, I hardly knew her. But we'll show you what happened with Miss Fields when she showed up. But I know you and Bert, I mean, when you guys get out here, you go a little crackers. Yes, we have. And you have such a good time. But I, being this short, I mean, cute little woman. Pixie. we Yeah, Pixie. And, and you would feel uncomfortable being this gentleman that you are, doing any of that physical kind of fun shtick stuff with yeah. me. You know, it, it just wouldn't work out. But. Now she starts. <laughs> this kind of stuff. I mean, you're pleased when you get to get your teeth into some physical shtick. Now, I know that, that it isn't fair because I'm this little short woman and, and you right. can't really, it can't be fulfilled because you can't come back at me with anything wonderful. None. Like, for instance, if I went... I 
I mean, I'm short, I'm cute, and I'm all in that. <laughs> here and I can... What is going on with you? Oh, I'm sorry. I could do that, you know, and, and I mean, there's no way... <laughs> that you could actually, you know, I mean, we couldn't really get into it, you know what I mean? What'd you say? I'm trying to be so sure sweet to you. Yeah, I, I know. Bert told you that, yeah, he said that this would be it. cute. He said you would love even if I went, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you love it? Uh, Look at that reaction, Johnny. You're a smash tonight. You're a uh, smash. Let me, let me explain something. Uh, yeah. Bert may have misinformed you. I think so, because I, uh... things for you. Yeah. Realize there are people seeing this show for the very first time tonight that you, never stay up quite yeah, this late. You probably think we're always mad. We have yeah. some... Uh, there are moments when we are We have control. some quieter comedy yeah. coming up for you <laughs> later on. We got a lot of great people. We're going to repeat the, the great uh, Jack Webb uh, dragnet sketch. We have the barroom brawl. We have Mr. Ed Ames with us tonight. We have Jimmy Mr. Stewart. Hall. A lot of people. First, we're going to do this commercial. Then we're going to come right back. Doctor? Thank you. Doc and the NBC Bank. <clears throat> now, this anniversary show would not be complete without an appearance by that great visitor from the East. The all-seeing, all-knowing, all-telling, all-omniscient, famous seer, sage, soothsayer, and former cultural, cultural attaché to Sheriff Lobo, Karnak the Magnificent. Again. Very often on this show, uh, we will have guests on, and uh, sometimes very important guests. I will say Sinatra or Bob Hope will be with us. Bob, I don't think he stayed through one show. That was the Dean Martin George Goble show, and we'll play you an excerpt from that, which was almost what eight or nine years oh. ago. A very funny segment, and they usually get up and say, "Well, I have to leave. I'm shooting a film in the morning," and they they leave. They can't stay for the whole show. One night, our guest was Steve Martin. So watch what he did. He was a guest. Here's Steve. Yeah. Well, look, I will wish you good luck on the special. I understand that you have to leave. Uh, yeah, I have, have to, to be somewhere this evening and go. Uh... Well, I have to rehearse. Uh, I know. Rehearse. Look, good. You're. I know you're doing a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Carl Reiner directing too. Yeah, that's good. That's pretty that's good. That's good. We can talk about that the next time you come. Yeah. Out. Okay. I appreciate Thanks it. For being Thank here. you very much. Thank you. Funny guy, Steve Martin. <laughs> I don't have to leave. I 
see all the big stars come on, they always have to leave. I just thought I'd say I had to leave, but I don't have to leave. You can definitely run all right. You can say a lot. That's all right. I understand. I understand. Can you, can you stay on a little while with us? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I can stay the whole I'm show going, a little I'm, bit longer. Okay, maybe right from here you can write on Tom Snyder. Okay. You know, right there. I know how you feel. Sure, thank you. That's sweet of you. We'll, we'll do this. We'll be right back. You'll still be here. Okay, don't leave now. Now, later on, we'll later on... We're Tony Quinn. Is the children of Sanchez open yet around the country? No, 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 no. It's, it's tomorrow. As a matter of fact, just for one week. And uh, then it opens uh, in February. Look, I hope it's a big smash for you, and I thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A gentleman now who has been on this show <laughs> many... No. You don't have any place to go with it? Can I speak? Sure. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tony didn't have any place to go either, and I... I just figured you would be out doing another interview, plugging the picture, but uh, you, no, please stay. No, no, no. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, Tony. No, no, no. Can you stay the whole show? No, yeah, I'll stay. Good, well. okay. <laughs> we, uh... What? I, had to, I was not here that night. Yeah, like he did that the same night that Steve Martin did it, and then... Did you see the look on Steve's face when I said goodnight to Tony Quinn? Like, he was very, uh... Upset, he yeah. thought I was dismissing him out of hand. <laughs> and Tony told me before, he says, I'm going to do that. But the look on Steve's face, he says, I don't... He turned to me, and Steve says, I don't think he wants to leave. <laughs> Lord knows there are enough commercials on television, year after year, and some of the same ones. And we always have this feeling that uh, we like to present commercials uh, so people can get certain hostile feelings out of their system. And uh, we resort, frankly, to, to pies which is a comedy staple that's gone back, I guess, since the first pie was ever baked. So here are some commercials uh, that we would like to see happen just once. Darling, you look sensational tonight. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. I have never seen you look more handsome, so uh, macho. Yeah, I'm glad you noticed I got my new suit on. You know, we ought to have a great time tonight. Ring around the collar, ring around the collar. Pie in the face. <laughs> Sir, how do you spell relief? How do I spell relief? I spell it R O L E. Pie. It's for you, sir. Thank you, Payne Weber. Hello, I'm Catherine Deneuve. As a modern woman, I prefer perfume. <laughs> Come on, I dare you. I dare you to knock this battery off my shoulder. Come on, I double dare you. Mind if I talk to you for just a minute? I just want to say a few words about diarrhea. You're away from home on your wall at a store. All your cash is gone. What will you do? What will you do? Why not? 
Dolly Parton is one of our favorite guests on this show, and, and she kids herself a lot. And one night I, I could not resist saying something to Dolly that I think probably everybody in the country has wanted to say at one time or another. Uh, so here's one night when Dolly paid us a visit. People make jokes about you, as you said, but you make more comments about yourself and the wigs and the clothes and, and costumes than anybody else, right? Well, I do it because I choose to, but uh, there's a lot of jokes. Does that ever bother you when people make? It used to when I was uh, real young in the business, when I first no. moved to Nashville. I didn't quite know how to take it, but uh, anymore, there's not a road show on the road that don't make some sort of jokes. No. Um, a lot of the country music people, good friends of mine, they do jokes like, uh, no one act, there's, uh, do you know what's worse than a giraffe with a sore throat? And they say, no what? And the answer is Dolly Parton with a chest cold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that... Yeah, I have to get used to it. Yes, that, that would really be an epidemic, wouldn't it? In case. Uh, is that what you had a couple of weeks ago when you couldn't be here? Was that a, no, was a, I didn't. a chest cold? <laughs> I didn't no, know. I only had the flu then. I just couldn't be here. But then there, there are other jokes. Mel Tillis, I know you've had him on the show. He's, he's with us he's this, end of this week. I know they used to do a, a joke, and he was the first, one of the first people that I saw doing uh, Dolly jokes. And um, he said, one night, he said, stopped in the middle of his show and said, uh, oh, I see we have uh, Dolly Parton in the audience tonight. And everybody turned around, everybody was looking and applauding. And, he kept looking and looking, and he said, Oh, I'm sorry, that's uh, two bald-headed men sitting together. Oh. <laughs> but that's Mel Tillis. That's Mel, but you see, After can do you that. get them so raw as that, then you kind of get used to it, and then you, you know, you kind of make your own jokes. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> have you always you been... You have to get used to it, really. Have you always been rather... Uh, zoftic? Uh, <laughs> what, what would they call that where you grew up in Tennessee? In a, I, uh, zoftic, I can't uh, say. Healthy? Uh, healthy, I guess. Yeah. Uh, um, Bosomy. Bosomy? Yeah, I guess that'd be mm -hmm. what they'd say. But, um, what did you ask me just before that? Have you <laughs> always like you, oh, the, well, yeah, young, I've always I mean, been uh, pretty well blessed. People are always uh, asking if they're real and... Oh, I, no, I would and never. I would I never, to, you see. No, you don't have to ask. I would not. I'll tell you what, these are my... I have certain guidelines on the show. Uh, I usually say... But I would give about a year's pay to peek under there. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. So to show you the latest in toys and new products that are on the market, here's a toy that just didn't work too well. You put the ball in the basketball player's hand, and here you have a simulated backboard and a little net. <laughs> Isn't this creative for yes, a child? Yes. And a little pole. What? A little, a little pole, pole and pole, a little stand. And a little plastic thing, yeah. and you take the little plastic basketball and put it in his little yeah. plastic hand, and you press his little plastic head. And he missed the bat. <laughs> yeah, I'll guess. Just chance. It's not easy. <laughs> this is for a little child. A little child can... <laughs> this is not for a grown adult male person. May I try it? What? Could I try it? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> you can play with my toy. <laughs> I thought it was easy, didn't you? You're going to look, make me look simple. No, no, no. I just think we'll get it right now. I almost have it. I almost get one. You had three shots. Ah! Oh. Ah, come on. It's got to be easier than that. Anyway, this is made by the... Uh, this is for about three or four-year-old children who know how to operate this thing. They all sink 80 baskets in a row. Let's, uh, all right, let's see what else we have here. This is a cannon. Very good. What? Very good. Well, I mean, this is a working cannon. This is, uh, this is called the Winchester model. This is based on an actual replica of the 1898 signal cannon. Hmm. Except they didn't have the radial tires, of course, in those days. <laughs> Now, what you use these for, you know, if they, they start uh, yacht races? Right. Uh, now, let's see, that's, uh, they've got, it's got a lanyard, isn't that what you call that? Right, lanyard's here. This opens up. I don't, don't, no, no, I'm not doing anything. Well, get your hand off my lanyard. <laughs> I've never touched your lanyard. And you take uh, these, like shotgun shells, and these are what, a half load? You can get put a full load in there, but it makes a hell of a racket. You've heard these things at football games? Right. 
They use them with football games to uh, signal the end of the game because they fire this, and when you see the referee fall, <laughs> then you know the game is over. Now you can, you can go as far away as you want to, and I'm going to back up a little bit. No, I got an idea. Wait, let's try the full load. Wait a minute. <laughs> See, that was a half load. I have. That's a. Ha I have an idea here. All right. <laughs> let's see. Is that? Got it. Wait a minute. That's caught. Put that down first, Joe. Watch out. Sink any baskets, huh? next segment you're going to see is the night that I come back to work after Don Rickles had guest hosted the show. And uh, this was completely spontaneous off the cuff. Don happened to be next door doing CPO Sharky. And I found out that he'd, he'd busted something here on the set. So we paid a visit. Watch. Uh-oh. What the hell happened to this? Well... As, as long as you, it's, you've seen what happened. You know how long I've had the cigarette box on this desk? You brought that out from New York City? I brought this from New York. What on earth? It happened last night. Who? Don Rickles. I did not see Don the show Don Rickles last did it last night. Are well, you putting me on now? No, no. Don Rickles did it last night on the show. He, well, what the hell did he do with it? It's, the, <laughs> the wood is broken. <laughs> That's an heirloom. Well... That, but look, I've had that box from the seat where I sit here and I get with my pencils during the show to keep my sanity. Well, I know. <laughs> I haven't broken that box. And Don Rickles... How did he do it? What did he, he do? Well, he was having a fit, you know, and he... Uh... How could you tell? <laughs> How could you tell? I just saw him in makeup getting ready to tape that uh, FPO uh, harky. <laughs> Or whatever CPO it is. Shark. CPO Shirky. Uh, no, I don't know. He told a joke and it didn't go well and he got upset and he did it over. Is he in... St he hit it. He hit it with is his he hand. Is he taping now? He's, what? Taping he's taping across the hall. CPO Sharky. Can I get over there? Can I get over there? Follow me. Is he in studio? Are they taping? Are they on the air? I don't give a damn if they're on the air. Open it up. Rickles. Rickles. Hold. Stop the taping. Stop the taping. Somebody broke my cigarette box. Come here. I don't believe this. Come here. Come here. <laughs> I just started the show. I picked my box up off my desk that I've had for nine years. My box is broken. They told me, they told me you broke it on the show last night. Well, I, I, I really... I, 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 you big dummy. I, 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 I. Hey, a black man. Hey, you're a black man. Hang him. What? You're right. Are you in, were you in the middle of something? No, no. I was just hanging around waiting for a Navy to just ship to come in. Did you break this box? Yes, I, I did. I, I'm sorry. Do you but... know how long I've had this box on the show? About nine years. I brought this out from New York. Look at this. 
That is very expensive. That's a darn shame. I, I'd give it to Tony Randall for a wedding gift. And I want to know. <laughs> I want to know what you plan to do about this. Well, I plan to wrap your hand in it. What do you want yeah. from me? No, I'm sorry to come over and interrupt your show, but when I saw this, I no, got so incensed. All right, it's millions of dollars. What do you care? What, what do you mean? <laughs> what are you doing? Yours. I'm just punching away here with six people trying to stay alive. That's all. Millions of dollars? <laughs> what are you doing with the money? <laughs> this can't be it. I get the feeling you're, you're Dennis James and I'm a bad contestant. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you kept the cotton mill down south. If this show goes like the others, you're out of work come January. Well, I would expect a very expensive trip. Something to replace this. A wonderful, large, wonderful, beautiful x-ray of your lungs. Look, I didn't... I didn't mean to interrupt your no, taping you here because I know no, you're you in your big dramatic you scene. And, you know, in your position today, you really are right. one of the biggest guys in the business. I want so my, help me. I want my Next box. Christmas, I'm going to make sure a tree drops on your head. I mean, <laughs> no, but I'm sorry about the box. Well, I so will, am I. I. I will come up with something. Well, I hope so. But just keep me on your show. You mean so much to me. Certainly. Can I... No, 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 no. Don't, don't humble yourself in front of these people. Don't, don't humble yourself in front of... I want something back. Okay, carry on. Carry on. Good to you. Okay. Commercial? We do a commercial? All right, we'll do a commercial and then uh, we have a little duet with Steve Lawrence. Ho, 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 Jolly Green Giants. Show us your niblets. Everybody, yes. <laughs> and you don't have to be too good. Everybody's a frustrated singer. I think I am, too. One night, Steve Lawrence was on the show, and uh, this is what happened. Where have you been, John? I haven't seen Where you in a long time. Is that with you? you have a great frustration to sing. No, that's, that's, that's a song that I could do well, you see. I always feel that when you got strings like that, you know. Come over here. No, no, I don't. Come don't. On. must remember no, this. Never mind. You see, what it is, is it's the violence. attitude when you come out. That's what sets it. See, they, they accept you. You come out with, you had a hand mic, right? Yes, you want a hand mic? We got a hand mic. You and, want do a... The, and you do it practically a cappella, except for the piano. Right? When you right. start. Then yes. the strings come in later. Strings sneak in it's nice, whole, and then they build to a big... It's a whole attitude. Yes. You stand there and coach I'll, me. I'll, Give me the, just the just lead, the in, intro, just like you did. The introduction of All Love Is Here To Stay, yes. And I'll, You want to come through? You want to open up the curtains? Attitude more does, does this mean I have to do the hunting sketch? That's right. <laughs> You see, now right away you laugh, you see. It's their attitude, you see, they're laughing because I think I'm gonna be funny. Yes. I'm not gonna be funny, I'm well, going to sing maybe they know song. something you don't. The very... <laughs> the song starts out... It's very clear, it's very clear. Our love is here to stay. Not, not for a year. Forever and a day. Just be passing fancies And in time may go But oh my dear Our love is here to stay
this, I went on to my own. Riding out on a horse in a star-spangled rodeo. Cards and letters from people I don't even know Like the rhinestone cowboy Riding out on a horse in a star-spangled rodeo Some of these things we have not seen for a few no. years. <laughs> Over the years, we, uh, one of the spots on the show that most people seem to enjoy are when we have animals on the show. And a frequent visitor, uh, along with Jim Fowler, is uh, Joan Embry from the San Diego Zoo. And uh, I think what you're going to see in this following segment, uh, I don't know what you're going to see in this following segment. Just some strange things that happen. You never know with animals. So we'll find out. He's really cute. What, what age will he be when he's really difficult to handle? It's not going to be long, like maybe tomorrow, the end of the week. It only weighs about eight or ten pounds. She weighs about ten pounds. I just said that. And, and it's a handful. I want to. Does she ever stop moving? She's fairly active right now. She no sleeps kidding. a good part of the day. That's it. Ah! That thing's a killer. Did you see him bite me? Why did he do that? She's just a, she's they only a... eat fruits and vet. I mean... <laughs> okay, okay, okay. These are orangutans. This is really a very special occasion to have twins. These are twins. And they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me, I don't mean to laugh at your face. It's a very sweet face. It really is. Look at that face. <laughs> very strong. Very strong for their age, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> they like to pull hair. Oh, look at that. And they're about five months old. Right. And... Look at the face. I think I'm in love. I thought I'm in love. <laughs> he looked right at me with. Oh, they're adorable. They're very uninhibited. And can, they he, have can he see me? I mean. Oh, yes. Oh, sure. And he'll laugh. If you laugh at him, he'll usually laugh. Will he laugh for you? Hey, you're all choked up about this. Same to you. Ah, now that is a very big rat. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is a bush dog. A and, bush dog? Uh, she was sent to us from the West Berlin Zoo, and uh, they received her from South America. And they're an endangered species. Can you hear? Can you hear? Hunt in packs. Hey, do we talk? A bush dog. They're not too commonly found in zoos. We've raised about 12 of them. You want to hold her? Sure, she likes so. you to hold her on her back and rub her belly. Well, so do I.
607. <laughs> Look at this, going to sleep. Bob <laughs> Bush dogging me one day. Going down the trail. Came upon a bush dog and said, hey, tail. Is he dead? What is he? Uh, this is a tarantula. <laughs> I think I'm going to cry. What is that animal doing on my wrist? We're, we're demonstrating how it moves, but... I know how it moves. What? That is a tarantula, That is a tarantula. Now, they're not as poisonous as most people think. Uh, how poisonous are they? Well, what, is, what is he doing there? Preparing to strike? Uh, Isn't it better if they keep moving? If, you, mean, don't, if you don't anger them, normally... Don't anger them. <laughs> what, am I going to say you're ugly or something like that? I'm not going to get him angry. How do you get a tarantula angry? Well, <laughs> by blowing on it. I'm not going to blow on him. <laughs> Why would I blow on a tarantula? <laughs> Give me one good reason. Or grabbing it. I or... won't do that either. No, I wouldn't or... blow on it or grab it or do anything. Or I wouldn't poking make him... at it. I like him. I wouldn't make him. <laughs> He's a good-looking tarantula. Yeah. Fine-looking tarantula. Real nice. He's going up my arm. Uh, I don't think they're really that hungry. I suppose they're... This one drank the whole bottle already. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, I know. Oh, they're adorable when they're this they small, beautiful? you know? Like everybody goes crazy over small animals. You say they're so lovely when they're cute. Especially these, because there's so few of them left. Just purring like crazy here. <laughs> now, how long will it take before they really get a little tough to handle? Well, we found out six months later. Okay. They're speaking to you right now. Just relax. They, they purr. Relax. They, they say if you look an animal right in the face and talk to them, you, you say, then they know you're not scared. Oh. Do a cat. Do a cat, Howard. Yeah. I'm talking show business, folks. <laughs> All right, a cat. Okay. They're funny. They like, they have certain things they like to say, and Howard likes well, to he say. He likes to laugh, that's all. Ha, ha, ha. He likes to say, my name is Howard. 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 I have said the following so many times over the years, but I mean every word of it. I've never had such a great kick of working with the best musicians in the world that Doc has in the Tonight Show band. And we're going to let them do their own thing tonight. So here, here is the greatest trumpeter in the world and our orchestra. Bye.
Listen. Guys, think about it. Come on. Thank you, guys. Thank you, fellas. No better than that. Uh, we've shown you some commercials uh, with pies. Well, we also like to take certain standard commercials, well-known, and kind of switch them around and have a little fun with them. So here are a few commercials, uh, a little bit different. You work on death row and get to know a lot about fear, human misery, and electricity. And after you throw the switch, now comes killer time. <laughs> it's time to relax with the best tasting beer you can find. If you're doing time, we've got the beer, killer beer. It's a shame about Charlie passing away so suddenly. Yeah, it sure is. Hey, I haven't seen you for quite a while. What have you been up to? Well, I've been investing pretty heavily. Mm -hmm. My broker says the stock market's going to go right through the roof. Yeah. My broker says hold off buying for a while. Well, my broker is E.F. Nutton. Mm -hmm. And E.F. Nutton says... <laughs> well, uh, will there be anything else for you today, Mrs. Wilson? Uh, yes, Mr. Goodman. I think I'll have another large tube of that pest toothpaste. Oh, you, you, you won't be sorry. Pest is absolutely the very best we have on the market today. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Johnny. Hi, Mr. Goodman. <laughs> and what would you like today? A large tube of pest. I don't want any toothpaste, Mr. Goodman. No toothpaste? No toothpaste. <laughs> what do you want, Johnny? My pantyhose make me look like I'm not wearing nothing. My pantyhose make me look like I'm not wearing nothing. Now, hold it, you little teasers. Now, come on. <laughs> Admit it, you're really wearing something, aren't you? Yes, we are. Well, I'm not. <laughs> From nature's clear, bubbling springs at the center of the earth comes... Periyek, the imported choice of insecure status seekers everywhere. Years ago, I had a little disagreement here in New Jersey with Big Al. I tried to move in on my territory. I had to take care of Big Al, you know what I mean? Anyway, I buried him right here in my backyard 15 years ago. Yesterday, my dog was bearing a bone and... What do you think I found? <laughs> Big Al took a licking, but his watch kept on ticking. You will be loyal and do your utmost as President of the United States. I will be loyal and do my utmost as President of the United States. Do you swear as President of the United States to uphold the laws and the Constitution of this nation? Did you know that Goodrich has a new steel ply radio tire? Why, no, I didn't. Yes, in fact, there's the uh, Goodrich blimp up there. I swear to uphold the laws and constitution of this nation. Then I pronounce you president of the United States. I don't believe Goodrich has a blimp. Particularly good, but uh, it was a wonderful night where everything was working together. Bob Hope was on the show. Dean Martin, Bob and Dean had been absolutely hysterical. George Goble had to follow them. You'll have to watch uh, when George is sitting next to Dean what, what Dean is doing during the interview. So here's one from about, what, eight or nine, almost 10 years ago. Johnny, I want to tell you something. I'm very <laughs> glad to be here. 
And I'm going to tell you, without me, your show tonight would have been nothing. <laughs> this is a pretty fast league. Oh, here, this is uh, the eight troops around and here. And I'm glad you saved me <coughs> now, you know, because, uh, you know, when you come on last, you're... Uh, did you ever get the feeling... Uh, did you ever get the feeling that the world was a tuxedo and you were a pair of brown shoes? <laughs> now watch one of those days, huh? <laughs> and I have a feeling it's going to get worse before it gets worse. <laughs> I asked you about this before. I think they thought you were making a joke to fighter pilots. You were a pilot, right? Oh, yes. I was a, uh, I was a pilot during the, the war. You remember the war? It was in all the papers. And I read you. <laughs> well, I told you about that the last time I was on your show, you know, but uh, I fought the whole war in Oklahoma. And, uh, Is that what you were saying? I don't know why people laugh when I say that, you know, because that's evidently where they needed me or they wouldn't have sent me. <laughs> laugh. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. You know, but if you remember, you think back. No, first of all, I was an instructor. I was in B-26, 89s first at Altus, Oklahoma, and then B-26s at Frederick, Oklahoma, and I was an instructor there. And if you think back, and, and I'm not mad at anybody or anything, but just remember, there was not one Japanese aircraft got past Tulsa. <laughs> I think I haven't checked the paper. Oh, well. I've been working all day. Of course you have. Oh, yeah, I was... What, what commercial? Were you, were you shooting a commercial today? Yeah, and... and then... You don't believe that. Oh, 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 whatever you say. Oh, uh, exactly what time did I lose uh, control of the show? Bob's. Thank you, Lotus. That was funny. You know, uh, one of our, uh, in uh, our attempt to cover all um, facets of the American scene, we, uh, politics is always a good subject for humor, and the last elections uh, gave us an opportunity, especially out in California when that had all the uh, various propositions. Only in California do they have strange propositions on the ballot. So we took advantage of that, and here's some, uh, here's some little black house having to do with the election. Oh, golly, it's really confusing. I've got three propositions here. Proposition five, class C smoking. No, it'd be illegal to smoke in public. I would no on that. <coughs> Let's see, uh, water conservation tax? Uh, no. But... Might have been wrong on that one. Let's see. Nudity? Yes. <laughs> and if you vote for me, Mr. Harrison, I can assure you, we'll both be sure the busing situation will be resolved exactly the way we want it. Thank you, and I'll see you at the polls. Hello there, Mama. <laughs> I think we're going to get the busing situation figured out exactly the way we want it. See you at the polls, Mama. Right on. And so the assault talks will resume tomorrow with many issues, of course, still left to be resolved. Time now for my nightly commentary. This evening, I would like to offer my thoughts on Proposition 6, which, if passed, as you know, would forbid homosexuals from teaching in our public schools. This proposition purporting to control the sex habits of the individual citizen through legislation is clearly a violation of that citizen's constitutional rights. It is this reporter's personal opinion that no government 
has the right to tell anyone how he should conduct his sexual life. That's tonight's news with a commentary. Thank you, and good night. Uh, yes, I hope yes. I hope my mother has gone to bed early tonight. <laughs> yeah. Might have might have missed that little. Uh, I don't know how many years ago this one took place. I think um, Andrew McLaughlin was was the director on this, and we had uh, James Drury and um, Doug McClure, who at that time uh, were doing a Virginian, one of the better westerns, and we asked Victor to come on and stage a, a barroom brawl with stuntmen. So we did this live on the show. It's not filmed or anything, and. Uh, Bobby Quinn did a wonderful job with this. So watch our, our barroom fight scene from about seven years ago. Give me a whiskey. Whiskey. That happens to be my drink. Good morning, Mr. Phipps. Buchek's Colonel Gregory Dashka is the man most able to keep peace with his country's neighbor to the south, Pakachu. He was recently captured by a small group of fanatics led by Valdor Bradkin and is now being held in a fortress outside of Pliskard. Your mission, Jim, should you decide to accept it, 
is to return Dushka from Kliskard without arousing any concern in either Pakachu or Buchek. <laughs> Should you or any member of your MI force be captured or killed, the secretary will disavow any knowledge of your actions. Good luck, Jim. This recording will self-destruct in five seconds. Black hair go. Yes. Where did that dark hair go? <laughs> Jimmy Stewart is one of our favorite guests. He's a nice man and a brilliant actor. We found out one night here Jimmy is also a poet, as only Jimmy Stewart can tell. He'd give you a poem. Got a thing about uh, a, a, a lake that we uh, went to see. Uh, if you want to, t uh, want me to tell you about. Sure. Sure. Well, like we we heard about this lake, Bur Lake Beringa, and it was in the western part of Kenya, and uh, very near to the uh, Uganda border, as a matter of fact. And uh, <laughs> first time, that's a first. That's a first on our show. Uganda border got a hand. <laughs> well, uh, this uh, this lake, and we started out one morning. We we uh, we had been in a place called Meru, which is sort of the eastern part of Kenya. And uh, we started out, and the two hunters, we had two uh, uh, Land Rovers, and as they started, we had this road, not a very good road, but I thought it was all right, and they said, the road is too bumpy, and it, it'll take too long, so we'll take a shortcut. So they just turned off the road and went off into the jungle. Uh, no road, nothing. It, it, they went as the crow flies, except we weren't crows. Right. And, they, and there, was, there was no fields, there were piles of stone, and we'd go up the piles of stone. And then there would be uh, great, big, uh, long sort of, uh, uh, what, what do you call them? Trees. Tree, no. <laughs> uh, not a small tree. Bush. Small, small bush. And, and bushes. bushes. And we'd go through the bushes and get all the dust uh, up, and we had four flat tires between us. It took eight hours. It took eight hours to get to the, the, the this uh, uh, lake, Baringo. And uh, they, the, uh, after eight hours, and it was getting dark, and we finally topped out, and there it was, and I must say, it was, it's, it was beautiful. And we got there, and there was an island in the center of it, and we got out, and we were going to we would spend the night in the island. And there we were, and the sun went down, and there was a full moon, and we were all there. And uh, it, it, was, it was really a beautiful place. I, I, I uh, made up a poem. Uh, <laughs> uh, the honor of Lake Ringo? About, about the uh, eight hours about that day, do you, do you, do you want me to tell us? Sure. Yeah. sure. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't make that whole journey to that lake not to hear the poem. <laughs> <laughs> lake Baringo is a body of water. Its surface is smooth as glass. But getting to Lake Baringo <laughs> is a genuine pain in the ass. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. My good friend, uh, Jack Webb, in the early days of television, did Dragnet with Ben Alexander and later his partner was Harry Morgan. And Dragnet is, is a show that established um, kind of standards for a lot of detective shows, and they were, were unique in their approach and their dialogue. And a lot of takeoffs and satires were done on Dragnet over the years. But uh, one night, Jack Webb is our, our guest. And I think this little piece of dialogue is, 
It was one of the best satires on the kind of dialogue that they used to have and the timing. So here's Jack Webb with Dragnet. This is the city. <laughs> Los Angeles, California. Some people rob for pleasure. Some rob because it's there. You never know. My name's Friday. I'm a cop. I was working the day watch out of robbery when I got a call from the Acme School Bell Company. There'd been a robbery. There's been a robbery. <laughs> yes, sir. What was it? How's that? <laughs> what was stolen, sir? I run a school bell company. Never had any trouble before. Can't understand it. Just, just make bells. Never had any trouble. Sir? Hmm? <laughs> what, what was stolen? My clappers. <laughs> Your clappers. Yeah, you know those things inside a bell that makes them clang? The clangers. That's right, we call them clappers in the business. A clapper caper. What's that? Nothing, sir. Now, can I have the facts? What kind of clappers were stolen on this caper? They were copper clappers. And where were they kept? In the closet. Uh-huh. Do you have any ideas who might have taken the copper clappers from the closet? Well, just one. I fired a man. He swore he'd get even. What was his name? Claude Cooper. Uh, you think that, he... That's right. I think Claude Cooper copped my copper clappers. Kept in the closet. You know where this Claude Cooper is from? Yeah. Cleveland. That place. <laughs> That figures. What makes it worse, they were clean. <laughs> clean copper clappers. That's right. Why do you think Cleveland's Claude Cooper would cop your clean copper clappers kept in your closet? <laughs> Only one reason. What's that? He's a kleptomaniac. <laughs> Who first discovered the copper clappers were copped? My cleaning woman. Clara Clifford. <laughs> that figures. Now let me see if I got the facts straight here. Cleaning woman Clara Clifford discovered your clean copper clappers kept in a closet were copped by Claude Cooper, the kleptomaniac from Cleveland. Now is that about it? <laughs> One other thing. What's that? If I ever catch kleptomaniac Claude Cooper from Cleveland who copped my clean copper clappers from kept in the closet, yes, I'll clobber him. <laughs> this looks to me like an 802. No, what's that? Klutzy comedy. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. We will, uh... We have a commercial? Yes. We don't seem to have as many commercials uh, on the shows we do late at night. It's crime time. Time. <laughs> time. time. One of the joys of crime time. We'll do this and we'll be back with some dumb stunts and then go back 14 years and meet Ed Ames all over again. It's empty. Thank you, Doc. Uh, yeah. Over the years, the staff has come up from time to time with some crazy things for me to do. One time or another, we did a free fall parachute jump. Uh, we still have some tape of quarterbacking the Jets years ago from New York. We uh, pitched to the uh, pitched to Yankees. Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris mm -hmm. at Yankee Stadium and flew with Art Scholl right. and the Thunderbirds and drove the turbine car at Indy. These are a little bit different. You've got to be slightly crazy to do this, but I trust the staff. Mm -hmm. Might be a mistake. Yeah. <clears throat> so here are a few things that we have done over the years. I hope it's a girl. <laughs> Doctor, this tumor started out. It couldn't have been any more. Okay. Just a little nodule. Johnny, we're going to do this blindfolded. Uh, on me? On me. 
No, uh, what? <laughs> why, why do you want to do that, you? I want to do this blindfolded. Sure you do. To prove my skill. Uh-huh. Are you ready for it? Well, yeah, I guess so. We'll save you some of the good parts. <laughs> Right there, you baby. Okay. <laughs> don't move your hands. Don't move, don't move your hands, Johnny. Don't move your hands at all. If the watermelon roll, let me cut you in two. Don't let me cut your oh, hand. Sure, sure. I don't want you to suffer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, presenting me. Don't move your hand. Don't worry. Okay. Hold it, the melon's rolling. You want to hit right up here. You want to hit right here. Right, and you want your head to end up a good uh, foot back here. Right now. Yeah. Get, uh, get uh, fairly tight. Oh, no. <laughs> you, uh, you really want to commit yourself. And you want to make sure that you don't uh, give in. Now tell us when you're going to do it. What? Tell us when you're going to do it, so we can be ready. A week, sir. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> what the hell am I doing? Well, I just, can I just hit it easily first, just to see what it... Just, you know, kind of... <laughs> I have to hit it right on the... You hit right, right on the... And uh, all the way through, really quick. Is a second? Does the adrenaline supposed to pump like this? Always. Because I think I just wet my pants. <laughs> ah. Nothing can go wrong, can it? As long as you land on it, no, nothing can go wrong. You're like Wilt Chamberlain going to bed. I'm not faking this. I just feel a little uncomfortable. I don't need on any way you want to go. Never mind. <laughs> just roll over. Yeah. Don't push out. Just land in the center. Anyways. How far am I going to fall? Oh, not far. Maybe uh, two and a half feet is all it's going to take. You might get three if you really try. Well, put the noose around. Okay, can I have the, have the hood, please, sir? Can I ask you one thing? I don't know this gentleman. Are you any relation to Fred Silverman? <laughs> Now, I want you to know this is a uh, real professional killer here. Now, you put the hood on after you put the noose on afterwards? Uh-huh. Because we can't have the hood coming no, I trust off and have them see your face. I and trust your you as a professional. This is... Things. Oh, my God. Okay. Go I ahead, trust Mr. you as a Hagen, professional. This is, this is safe? No. Okay. That's a rope around my neck. Okay. Tighten it up here. Now, don't, don't do anything until I'm ready. I regret that I have but one life to give for my network. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. Mr. Hangman, do your job.
close the curtain. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Okay, now, I suppose of all the things that people talk about, it was the night that Ed Ames, who played, uh, I think, Mingle the Indian on the Daniel Boone series, threw his famous tomahawk. So we take you back to 1965. This is in black and white. Okay, Mingo. Well, shall we have Get a go? Get your axe, axe and let's go. All right, let's <laughs> What is the trick on this? You throw underhanded? No. Oh, the, uh, overhanded. It's then. an overhand throw. The trick is to keep your arm extended, and that way you break the microphone. You know, you keep your arm extended and uh, put only one revolution on the uh, once around, once around uh, on the way. But uh, that's indefinite. thank all of you for being with us on kind of a special show for us and those of you who don't get to see the tonight show because it's late at night we hope you got a kick out of what we've been doing some of the things we've been doing for the past 17 years and i want to say that there's no way that i could have done this show this long without this gentleman sitting right over here to my right you, and mr doc severinson over here and all of the people Freddie and Peter and all of our staff who worked very hard for really just one basic simple premise and that the Tonight Show is to entertain. We have no pretensions about it being anything but that. So thank you at home for being with us, sticking with us for 17 years, and we're going to be around for a while. Good night. Yeah.